This is an overview of the cover flow carousel for Elementor by Unlimited Elements. Let's get started. Hi, and thanks for joining. It's a meet from Unlimited Elements, the widget library for Elementor. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the cover flow carousel for Elementor by Unlimited Elements. So if you're new to Unlimited Elements, for this widget, you're going to need to have the pro version installed. If you don't have it yet, you can jump into unlimited-elements.com, jump into pricing, choose your plan, and download the plugin. Once you've downloaded the plugin and installed, activated your pro license, over here in the search bar, you can search for CoverFlow and it will find the widget that you want to install. Hover over the widget, click install, and now it's available in the widgets pane inside of Elementor. Let's jump to a new Elementor empty page. And over here, I'm going to click on the widgets pane, widgets library, and I'm going to search again for cover flow. Awesome, we found the widget. Now I'm just going to click on it and drag it inside of one of my columns on my canvas. And this is the widget itself. It's a really awesome cover flow effect with a couple more skins. And I'm going to take you over all of the different layouts and show you all the different settings, how you can set this up and how you can style it just for your website. So you can see it's built from an image and a content area. The content area has an icon, a title, text, and a call to action button. And you can also change all of this content area into an Elementor template and load any template that you want inside of the carousel. First setting first. So the first setting is for style. So we can change the style, for example, for cover flow to carousel. And you can see it's also sort of a cover flow carousel, but with a different skin. It acts a little bit differently. You can play around with these. This one doesn't have a reflection and the other one did have a reflection. So you can play with those. Wheel. Wheel is a really awesome effect, sort of like a type of a wheel effect. And I like to use this one only with images and when it's full width, you can see a demo on our demo page. In the description, there's going to be a link. So if you want to see that, you can do so. And there's a really nice skin that's called flat skin. And also really, really awesome. It's even uh, more flat, doesn't have like the 3D effect, but really, really cool. The next setting is for content layout. So we can choose if we want the content to be under the image or an overlay effect. An overlay effect means that only once you hover over the image, you will see the content itself. So that's how that works. Now, we're using the flat style and the spacing is minus half. I'm going to change the spacing to zero just so the images don't overlap. And you can see how cool that is. Now, if uh, uh, you want to change the spacing, you can use your up or down arrows. So for example, let's go for minus 0 0.1 and you can see that there's less spacing between the images and you can play around with that until you get the exact spacing you want. Let's jump back to the cover flow um, skin and maybe let's add less spacing so we get something cool. I think that looks awesome. And let's push that back down the content. Awesome. The next part is for loop. So right now you can see that once you get to the last item and I click next again, it will jump back to the first item. If you don't want that to happen, you can turn off loop. And now once you get to the last item, you can't move any further. Click. Clicking on an item switches to that item. That means that I can click on a specific item and it will jump to that exact item. 
So you can enable this or disable this. I like it when it's uh, enabled. And you have an option also to navigate with your keyboard. And I can't really show that because you can't see my keyboard, but in general, you can use your left and right arrows to navigate between the different slides. Scroll wheel is for the wheel on your mouse. That's also hard for me to show, but right now I'm using my scroll wheel and you can see that it's navigating between the different slides, which is really, really awesome. And touch is for mobile devices. For example, your mobile phone and uh, maybe an iPad. So that's really awesome. The next part is for start item index. So if this is left empty, actually, we're going to show the middle slide at the beginning, but that's not always the case. Sometimes you want to start from your first slide. So to use the first slide, we're going to need to use its index. The index encoding is zero. So I'm going to put in zero over here. And now you can see that the start slide is the first slide. If I wanted the third slide to be first, or the fourth one, sorry, I will put the number three. And right now it's going to be the fourth slide. So you can determine which slide you want to be in the middle part over here, which is pretty awesome. Transition duration, so that's just for the transition between each slide. If you want that to be higher, this is in milliseconds. So right now it's half a second. And navigation, navigation is really important. We have an option to turn on navigation before or after. So let's see how that looks before. I'm gonna turn that on. And now you can see that I have an option to navigate between my different items with something that's like a sort of a menu or an anchor menu or something like that. Next part is navigation type. You can see that over here, it's using the titles of the items. If I don't want it to use the titles of the items, but something that's a little bit more like pagination, I can just use numbers and I can jump like to the fifth slide, for example. Awesome. Autoplay, also a really important setting. If you want, you can turn that on. And now it's going to play automatically between the slides every four seconds. So also this is something that you can determine the autoplay timeout. For example, if I wanted it to just stay one second on each slide, I would change that to one. And now you can see one second, one second, one second. Pause on hover. So that's for when I'm going to move my mouse above, you can see that it stopped. And when I take my mouse off, it's going to autoplay again. Let's see what we have over here in layout. So inside of layout, we can turn on or off our navigation arrows, which is actually really awesome. We can turn on or off the whole content area over here. So I'm just going to show how that looks. If I turn that off, we're left only with images, which really a lot of people like using it this way. So over here, you can turn off the whole content area. You can also turn off the whole image area. So now we're left only with sort of a content cover flow carousel, which is also really awesome. We can turn on or off the icon over here. You can see each slide has an icon. Of course, you can edit this icon, but if you don't want any icons at all, you can just turn those off and et cetera, et cetera, for the title, the text and the button. The button has a button text, of course, and that's about it for this part. Let's jump into the items and see how you can manage your items. So over here, these are the default items. If you want to delete any of these items, you can just click the X over here and that will delete the item from the carousel. To add a new item, you can duplicate a current item or you can click add item. I always like duplicating, but that, that depends on you. Let's jump to the first item over here and see what we have to edit. So. The icon is for the icon that we turned off. You can choose any icon that you want. You can also use a custom SVG icons. Title, you can see that's over here. It's the title and it's going to also use the title for the navigation when it's not using index numbers. 
image position. So if you want to override the image position, by default, it's always going to stretch over the whole area over here and it's going to be center center just to see the center of the image. But if you want to show a different part of the image, you can also do that as well. Over here, it's for the text. This is a text editor. You can also add links over here, add bold, italic, all the different uh, styling options. Maybe make a list inside of here if you're showing features or a pricing uh, sort of part. And the next part is for the button link. That's where this button is going to go. Of course, this can be dynamic if you have Elementor Pro or something like that. Template, if you want to load inside of here, this area like a login form or a contact form, an accordion or something like that, you can load any template. You just need to create the template first and then you can just select it from the list over here. And the next part is for the override colors. So for example, I'm just going to show one example. If all my slides have white color for the text, the title text, I can override that just on this specific slide and make it on this slide red. So the overrides that we have optional right now are for the content over here, the content background, the title text and the text color. So three types of overrides that just makes really, really cool uh, effects on your uh, website and you can override any of those colors. Let's jump into the style tab and I'm not going to hesitate on this too much, but first one is for item width. So right now you can see the width is 300 pixels and you can change the width to whatever you want. Make sure you don't make it too wide because at the end of the day, it's going to be also on mobile or you can override the width on your mobile device. So for example, if you want, you can make it 500 on desktop and then on mobile, just 200 pixels, just so it fits in. We can add some radius just to make the corners rounded over here. We can add a border and a shadow maybe if we want to. Really flexible image height. You can change the height of the image over here to whatever you want. And, and add a border to the image, change the image fit from cover to contain. Maybe you want to change that and et cetera, et cetera. We have all the styling options, typography, colors, border radius for all the different parts. And that's about it. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful and I'm going to see you in the next video.